All right. We have with us Lorenzo Miniero. He is the chairman and co-founder at Michico, or Meet Echo. He worked on multimedia conferencing at the University of Napoli. He is an active contributor to the Internet Engineering Task Force standardization activities. He is the author of Janus, and he's going to be talking with us. He says, Janus provides a powerful yet flexible way to cover different scenarios via WebRTP. His talk is titled, All Roads Lead to WebRTC, an Introduction to Janus. Big round of applause for Lorenzo. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. And first of all, I mean, having to follow up after uh, Jonathan Rosenberg and David Duffett, it's tough. I mean, it's like ACDC and Metallica just played, and then there's me with a kazoo or something like that. So <laughs> I'll, I'll try to, to entertain you anyway. So yeah, uh, my presentation will be on Janus specifically. I don't know how many people are already familiar with it and have heard about it. So I thought that I would basically just provide a quick introduction of the several things that it can provide. And towards the end, I'll also explain how it can actually be a nice complement to what FreeSwitch does, so that it can actually work uh, together. And uh, yeah, I'm from the University of Napoli, so I, I got my PhD and master's degree there a few years ago, and then I co-founded a company called Miteco. Uh, this is my actually my first time here at Klucon, if we don't count the Klucon Weekly. I did a couple of them. One a couple of years ago, and one actually just a few weeks ago with Debbie and Madison talking about JanusCon, which I'll talk about briefly towards the end of the presentation. And just a few words about what our company does. I mean, we are a very small company based in the south of Italy. We were actually a spin-off of the university. We, were all, we all got our PhD there, focusing on real-time multimedia applications, very involved in the ITF, especially at the beginning. And we do the usual things that you can expect out of a small company like ours, so consulting services, commercial support, and things like this, but also streaming of live events. I'll talk briefly about what we do at the ITF in a few minutes. And this is our home. This is where we, we studied, we, where we work, and so on. So not a bad place to live in, as you can see. And I mean, I don't think I have to explain what WebRTC is. Pretty much everybody knows, knows what, what it is in principle. The interesting thing about this picture is that while WebRTC was originally conceived as a peer-to-peer -peer way of having two people uh, through a web server exchange information to then talk to each other, so something like this, uh, using uh, secure protocols and stuff like that. The interesting part is that uh, when one of the peers is actually an application, it opens up the doors to do many interesting things. And you know this already because that's what FreeSwitch does as well, for instance. And so Janus is basically a component that can take care of both the signaling aspects and the media aspects to allow you to do some interesting things. And Janus, pretty much as FreeSwitch, uh, is, is open source. It's a WebRTC server. Uh, we conceived it as general purpose, and I'll explain why in a minute, be minute because of how uh, the, the modular architecture is conceived. You can find there a few links where the, the repo is to, to get the code, to, to some demos, to play with it, done some documentation, our community group, and so on. Uh, I was explaining how uh, it it has basically a modular architecture. So pretty much like FreeSwitch, we have a, a strong core that takes care of some aspects, and then everything else is a module. More precisely, the main, the main purpose of the, the Janus core is actually implementing the whole WebRTC stack. So uh, we take care of everything about WebRTC, like the negotiation aspect, ties, DTLS, and everything else in the core itself, so that we just need to worry about that once. We don't need to worry about it when you want to extend Janus to add new features. Everything else, as I was saying, is actually a plugin, so a different module, and starting from the transport itself. So we have uh, a way to control Janus that is called the Janus API, that is pretty much like Verto is to free switch. And this Janus API can actually be transported over different, let's say, transport protocols. So you can use HTTP or WebSockets if you are contacting Janus via a browser, for instance, but there are also other protocols that allow you to control Janus in different ways. So for instance, from, the, from a server application, like using RabbitMQ or NanoMessage or MQTT or stuff like that. So, and it, this, is a, this is all modular. So if you come up with a different transport in the feature, all you have to, to do is add a new module and Janus will recognize it automatically. But most importantly, also how you handle the media is uh, handled in different modules. And more specifically, all the application logic about what to do with the media, what to do when a packet comes in, what to send back to users, and so on. This is all implemented in different plugins. And the idea was that basically, 
uh, these different plugins would provide you with different functionality that you could combine in uh, basically as bricks in order to build more complex applications. And just to give an idea of this from a visual perspective, in this case, we have a browser talking to Janus using HTTP to, to actually exchange some information with the server. And then we have two different peer connections, two different media channels uh, between the user and Janus. In this case, one is going to a plugin and one is going to another, and one plugin is connect, contacting another external backend. It may be, for instance, talking to a SIP infrastructure. The other plugin may be originating media on its own. It really doesn't matter to the browser that is actually handling the media, because at the end of the day, it's still media going back and forth. All that matters is that Janus allows you to have some flexible management of those media streams by using different plugins in the backend. And this is all made possible by the uh, certain modularity also in the, in the Janus API in the first place. Because, and this is actually derived from some standardization work that we did in media control at the ITF. Basically, each plugin can, can implement its own sub-protocol, which means that when you write a new plugin and you want to, to exchange messages in a different way with users, you just use the Janus API as a transport to exchange its messages back and forth, which makes it very easy to extend Janus with new plugins and new functionality because all you need to do is write a new plugin and this plugin may have completely different requirements from existing plugins and so you may need to have your own way of talking to users. Just to give you a quick overview of some of the plugins that we have, the SIP gateway is one of the most common plugins and it basically implements a SIP endpoint living within Janus. So the, basically the idea is a WebRTC user uses the Janus API to talk to Janus, and this then translates in the back in actual SIP transactions that happen to interact with the SIP infrastructure, which makes it very easy for web developers to register to a service, start call, receive calls, and stuff like this. And I mean, it's much more complex than that. You can see there are a few links to a few presentations that I've done in the past, but really this is the concept. And we are using the same stack that FreeSwitch uses for SIP. Specifically, we are using the Sophia SIP stack, which is quite flexible in that regard. We have an audio MCU, an audio mixing application that allows you to do very simply com uh, audio conferences in, uh, in Janus. And it basically takes care of audio mixing and transcoding uh, in the plugin itself. Uh, but more importantly, and this is probably the most commonly used plugin in Janus in the first place, is the video SFU that we have called the Video Room. And an SFU is basically a way to not mix streams as FreeSwitch does, but pretty much relay streams instead exactly as they are. So you have users that are publishing streams and people that can subscribe to these streams instead. So that media just comes in and it's relayed to all of the interested participants at any time. And since this is very, very flexible and configurable, this means that you can do uh, uh, regular conferences where everybody's talking to each other, but also, let's say, webinars where you have one people contributing, everybody listening, one to many, many to many, whatever you want to do. This is basically the, the approach. And another commonly used plugin is actually the streaming plugin, which we call basically the broadcasting plugin, because it allows you to, to take um, a source that doesn't, doesn't necessarily know anything about WebRTC, just need to know about RTP and media, encodings and stuff like that. Think, for instance, an FFmpeg or a GStreamer pipeline generating RTP uh, in VP8 and Opus or something like that, sending a copy of this to Janus, and Janus automatically turns it into a WebRTC broadcast that a lot of people can, can receive at any time. And this is actually useful in several, several use cases. So, for instance, you see a camera over there. A common use case is the streaming plugin connecting to an RTSP camera, the, the one used for surveillance typically, for instance getting the, the video from there and then publishing it to all the people that are interested. It, it makes it very easy to take a surveillance camera and distribute it over the internet, for instance, as a, uh, on the cloud and stuff like this. And you also see a Janus icon in the possible sources over there, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. And uh, this is a relatively less known feature in Janus, but uh, all the plugins in Janus are actually written in C, because C is the language that Janus is written in. But actually, recently, we added support to write uh, a plugin logic instead in Lua or JavaScript instead, JavaScript using duct tape. And this makes it very easy to quickly prototype new, new plugins, new application logics, if you want to do that. And as a matter of fact, it's what I often use for dangerous demos. So, I'll do my dangerous demo tomorrow as well here, and I actually wrote a plugin in Lua to implement the logic that I wanted to implement there. And so I was saying how these plugins don't necessarily need to be seen as 
uh, applications per se. So we have the video SFU. The video SFU is not a the conferencing plugin. It's basically a plugin that allows you to, to relay streams in different ways depending on what you need to do. And so actually what we wanted to do was provide functionality that you could combine in creative ways. One of those might be very simply a webinar or application. So you have you could use the video SFU to allow the speaker to, to send his own video and his own screen sharing as separate streams to, to Janus so that other people can receive it. Audio, audio you may want to, to handle in another way. Maybe you want a mixed backend because you want to allow people to chime in and make questions. It might be using the audio bridge plugin. You may use the C plugin to connect to free switch and handle the audio mixing there. The instant messaging part could be done using XMPP or whatever, or it could be using the text room plugin, which is basically using data channels in Janus to do, to do the same thing. The idea is that basically Janus is supposed to be a tool that you can use and integrate into your application to do creative things. Another interesting use case is the so-called social TV. So you have, for instance, there a TV channel, think of the Super Bowl there served via WebRTC somehow, and then on the side you are talking to all of your friends into a web conference at the same time. So each of, each of your friends is at home, they are at their, their own home, but you are all sitting on the same virtual couch to watch the same Super Bowl together and having fun. And this could be done with Janus using the streaming plugin for the broadcast part and the video room plugin for the interaction with friends instead. A more interesting use case and actually practical use case is actually how, you use, how we use Janus uh, to, to, to provide remote participation at the ITF meetings. Because in particular there we use three different plugins at the same time. We use the SIP plugin for audio, everything is mixed. We have a laptop connected to the local mixer boards in the room, pretty much as the one here. We get the audio from there, send it to, uh, to the conference bridge, and whatever we get from the conference bridge we play out in the room again, so that remote presenters and remote speakers can interact with the audience locally. The, the local camera, like the one Michael has there in the back, and the projector are all both captured using FFmpeg. FFmpeg sends plain RTP towards Janus, and Janus turns it into a WebRTC broadcast, so that people in the, in the room actually see a WebRTC stream coming from those devices, even though they were not originated via WebRTC. And remote presenters instead use the video SFU regularly. They, they send their own a video stream and other people see it and we also have a, a laptop in the room so that there is a second screen somewhere that shows the remote speaker anytime they are actually presenting. And this basically is pretty much transparent to end users because if you look at the application it's basically just the regular conferencing application. You see, you see slides, you see a couple of video streams, you don't really know which stream is coming from where. You just see different streams that can be handled pretty much however you want. And since they are different streams, not mixed, we can uh, basically allocate them however we want. We may want to, to, to give priority to the, to the current speaker, even if it's remote. We may want to hide the slides because the, the conversation is more important. There may be more than one active speaker at the same time, maybe one remote presenter, another person in the queue that wanted to, to interact with them. This is how basically remote speakers appear in the room when they are actually being displayed in the local venue. As I was saying, a separate screen just for, for displaying their feed. And then everything in Janus is recorded, so we don't do any transcoding or mixing there. Anytime we record, each individual stream is dumped like a structured v uh, RTP dump, basically. And we only post-process them after, after the event. In this case, we have a melt processor that basically takes all the individual streams together to generate a single video to then publish over YouTube, for instance. And this, this way of handling streams is actually very effective for us also to control all of, all of these sessions because the ITF meetings always have eight tracks in parallel at the same time. And so it's hard to monitor them all if you're not in the room. And so what we did is basically create a controlling application that allows us to remotely control the webcam, check if any stream is, uh, is broken for any reasons, if, uh, if there is anything that we need to do to fix things and so on. But coming back to the features, uh, I mean, all of, uh, I briefly described what the plugins implement in general, but we have also some functionality that are generally available to all plugins uh, if they make use of it. And one of those are actually simulcast and SBC. I won't go too much in detail about what these actually are, also because I'll, I'll be back in Chicago for the IIT conference to speak exactly about simulcast and SBC, about the state of, of, of what they are currently, especially from the standardization perspective. But they're basically a way to, for publishers to, 
to send multiple qualities of themselves at the same time so that subscribers can choose what they want to receive at any time. So I may be sending a high, medium, and low quality at the same time to, to the room, and then uh, a user may want to only receive the low quality stream because either they don't have enough bandwidth for a higher quality, or maybe because they know that my video will be displayed in a small thumbnail and so it doesn't make sense to receive a 180p stream into a thumbnail and waste band bandwidth just for that. And we do support these uh, in Janus. Uh, there's a quick screenshot there that shows uh, two different uh, streams receiving two different qualities of myself. We do support data channels as well. Uh, we also do, uh, there is a blog post there that describes also a bit how you can do interesting things like broadcasting of data channels as well. And again, data channels I'll be using tomorrow in the dangerous demo as well if you're curious about how those work. Uh, an interesting feature that we added is called RTP forwarding because it opens up the door to a lot of different things that you could do. Typically when you are in a, let's say, web conference, you have a user contributing media to the, to the room and other people receiving media from this user. But if I want to receive and handle the media from this user in another application for any reason, I can do that via the so-called RTP forwarding, which as the name suggests, is just a way for Janus to stream the unencrypted traffic or encrypted, if you want to encrypt it anyway, traffic via RTP to another component, which may be FFmpeg, GStream, or another Janus instance or whatever, to do cool things with it. One of those may be implementing large-scale broadcasting over WebRTC, which was actually the subject of my PhD at the time. Imagine a user contributing something via WebRTC, via his browser. If we have a large-scale, uh, let's say, a tree-based distribution over there, and we make sure that the same stream is available to a wide battery of other Janus instances over there, instantly I'm able to send my stream once and make it available to potentially, I don't know, millions of users. So it may be, for instance, the case of the Super Bowl on WebRTC, as I was saying. And in the middle there, it can be applications, it can be a multicast network, it can get BSDN, it really doesn't matter. All it matters is that Janus is able to uh, take this RTP stream outside of Janus and then distribute it however you want and then re-inject it in Janus using, for instance, the streaming plugin. It might be interesting for remote artificial intelligence and machine learning, machine learning, because if I'm able to get the video that a user is contributing via WebRTC, I can do interesting things like emotion recognition using the Azure framework, as, well, as my colleague was doing there, or let's say image recognition, face processing, and stuff like that, or using TensorFlow to process the video. These are all things that you can do just by having access to the stream that was originally conceived, passed via WebRTC. It's also interesting in terms of how to provide geographic access to, to different users. So imagine you have different Janus instances in different regions, and you want to, each user to join, to the, to join the, the closest instance to theirs. Basically, what you do is you have one user contribute their, their media, and then you relay the unencrypted stream towards the other Janus instances, possibly behind the curtains using, I don't know, cloud services. You are in a data center of some sort and so on. And then you re-inject it in Janus so that it becomes a, a, a WebRTC stream again that people can subscribe to. It's very simple, very effective. It does require some orchestration because it does require some management of multiple instances at the same time, but this is something that can be done. Uh, this can all be monitored using the so-called event handlers, which are basically our way of pushing live events out of Janus, specifically, for instance, to, to Homer, which is a common way of handling these events and, and monitoring them. And if you're interested about how this can all be scaled, I actually made a very long presentation at ComCon last year that explains how there are different ways that you can scale Janus depending on the actual use case. And instead, this year at ComCon, I talked about multi-stream instead. That is how you can actually serve multiple streams in the same peer connection. Because at the moment in Janus, we typically only do one audio, uh, one audio stream and one video stream per peer connection, which means that if you are in a video conference and you are receiving a lot of people at the same time, you need to create individual peer connections for each one of them. This change allows you to do uh, much more complex things, so possibly one peer connection to send a lot of streams, receive a lot of streams, which will open the door to a lot of interesting things. And I made a quick couple of examples there, like me uh, in an echo test application sending four copies of myself to myself because I have no friends as WebRTC developers do. <laughs> and then I was also, let's say, watching a soccer, a soccer match uh, and listening to Iron Maiden at the same time using the same peer connection, which was another interesting use case, especially for me. 
So I was mentioning how actually Janus and Free Switch can actually complement each other because you don't really need to see them as two components doing the same things. They are really not. For instance, we are not really a PBX. We, don't, we are. I was mentioning how with SIP we are only endpoints. We are not really do, providing anything more than that. But most importantly, especially if you think about video, we are mainly an SFU. We don't do any mixing or transcoding uh, on video at all. We just relay packets. While well, instead, Free Switch has a very good video mixer instead. And that's one area where, for, for instance, the two can actually work together in some use cases. And actually, uh, they are able to communicate with each other because both components are based on standards. We both talk WebRTC, we both talk RTP. It's very easy for us to communicate. If you just orchestrate the APIs with each other, it's, it's easy to have them talk to each other. Some people have done this in the past. I know that Luca, Luca Pradovera made a presentation a couple of years ago talking exactly about a use case like that. There are a couple of things that you need to be aware of, like the different ways we do bundling and, and stuff like this, but nothing that can be easily overcome and to actually build interesting applications on that. And I'll explain you in a couple of minutes uh, how you can learn more about all that. Because while I'm done for the, with the presentation, I want to quickly uh, plug also another event that we are organizing. So I'm really excited to be here at Clucon for the first time. You are at, this is the, fif the 15th edition, as far as I've understood. This will be the very first edition of JanusCon instead. So we are organizing our own conference, much smaller in scale than this one. Of course, it's our first event, but I'm really excited about it. It will be hosted in our hometown in the south of Italy, in Naples, at the end of September. We have a, a few interesting sponsors there. If you're interested in helping us, uh, just let us know. And this is interesting to you as well, because there are actually a couple of presentations that we deal exactly about how to work with Janus and FreeSwitch together. One will be by Luca Pradovera himself, uh, there he is. He will actually explain how uh, the, the MCU and SFU approach can work together for a real application and how they are using it in production. And another presentation will be by Giacomo Vacca by Nexmo, from Nexmo. We will provide a workshop to explain in practice how this works. So we will teach you how to orchestrate the Janus API and Verto together to actually do something practically and take advantage of the two together at the same time. We will also have a nice uh, social event right, right on top of the sea, and actually the event itself is right on top of the sea because we are right in front of this iconic castle over there. We are right on the seaside. It's supposed to be a very nice uh, weather and so on. So if you're interested, just let me know. I also brought some swag from, from Janus and Miteco in the first place. So if you're interested in, in anything, just, just come to me, say hello, I'll be here all week, pretending, pretend to care about what I say, and you can get away with some free stuff. <laughs> so this is all from me. I don't know if I have time for questions. Otherwise, uh, it's been great talking to you. Thanks. Do we have any questions for him? Question over here on the right. I'm sorry, RTP streams into? Uh, GRPC, you mean? Uh, no, not yet, no. Uh, sorry, yeah, it, uh, he was asking if there was any plugin that could actually translate RTP streams to GRPC instead, and we don't have anything yet. But since it's modular, it's something that once you figure out the Janus API, it's something that you can just craft a new plugin and, and implement that. Question right here. Go ahead. Uh, as you mentioned, you use SFU for video conference, right? So in that, in that case, as many members are there in the conference, those many streams have to be downloaded and then execute to users. So it, it, it is a uh, required bandwidth for the video conference. So how do you tackle that? Because since there are lots of users in the video conference room, it can get crazy and uh, the quality can degrade. Yeah, so the question is basically how to handle the, a situation where you have a lot of people in the, same, in the same conference room and how to avoid the chaos that can entail about that. So in principle, as I was saying, the, the video room plugin and the SFU in particular is very flexible. It means that you are free to decide when you want to publish and you are free to decide to what you want to subscribe. So you don't really have to subscribe to all of the individual streams over there. So, for instance, if you are on mobile, you may to subscribe to only a couple of, couple of them, maybe the most active speakers. If you are on a huge desktop, you may want to subscribe to them all. And the video room plugin does provide you with the flexibility to do that. We also have ways to 
use the same peer connection to switch from one source to another, which is also a, an effective way to, let's say, it's pretty much like a TV channel. You choose what, what to follow according to, for instance, active voice activity detection and stuff like this. So all the primitives to implement this functionality are there. It does require some, some effort from, from the application developer to, to make use of this functionality, to, to use this feedback effectively to, to take care of all that. But all the functionality that is needed is actually there. You just need to use it to, to do what you need. Other questions about, for our speaker, about the software, about what he works on? A question up at the front. Yeah, no, no, we actually do use Docker a lot. So we, we, we use Docker in all of our uh, production environments. One of my colleagues is actually a great expert in Docker. He works, uh, he works a lot on that. And so he specifically worked on, on how to, to implement WebRTC communication effectively on Docker. Because if you worked on Docker a lot, you know that it has a, by default, it has a very weird networking management that works nicely for web applications in general, but really not for real-time media applications because of its, uh, its, its NAT behavior. It can work pretty much as a symmetric NAT in some cases. So we have found ways to actually take advantage of, the, of Docker without suffering from those. And so basically we are able to, to scale, to, scale to, to, our, to our needs effectively thanks to Docker. So the ITF meeting that I was explaining before, it's all based on Docker. So we have Docker instances to serve, to, to, to implement all of the different parts of the, of the remote participation tool there. So we really believe it's an, a very effective uh, mechanism. All right, big round of applause. Thanks.